I conducted over 27 ballistics gel and pattern tests with over 100 hours of research to learn the 10 secrets that I'm going to share with you in this video. Hey, George back with the New Hunter's Guide, the YouTube channel and podcast, helping new hunters get started and bringing new insights to all hunters. Guys, today I have the culmination of two years worth of research. This is hands-on applied field tests, ballistics gel, pattern tests, as well as lots of book research and a lot of different videos that I've done. I've boiled everything down in this video for you guys. I first delivered this presentation at the US and International Outdoor Show in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania earlier this year, but I promised you guys that I would do a YouTube version just for you that would be more digestible in this format. And of course, I am wearing camo today because the YouTube trolls have let me know that unless you're wearing camo on camera, you've obviously never hunted ducks a day in your life and your information cannot be trusted. So we don't want that to be the case. Let's go ahead and jump into number one. And number one is density is king. All right, it doesn't matter what you use. It doesn't matter how fast it is. It doesn't matter what the wad, the choke, nothing. You can never overcome density. Let's look at the first bit of data right here. And you can see here when you've got lead, you've got bismuth, you've got steel. No matter what, guys, you cannot overtake the next category. Of course, I forgot to put tungsten on this chart. But you cannot overtake the next category. Whether it's steel, it'll never be lead. Whether it's bismuth, Smith, it'll always be better than steel. Whether it's tungsten, it'll always be better than everything. Density matters more than anything. Here is some test data that I'd put together for you guys. You can see here that bismuth number four beats steel number four even when the steel's going faster. It even beats steel number two when the steel's going faster. Check out this test data right here. You can see that bismuth number two will always beat steel number two even if it's going much faster. It'll also be beat steel BB shot even if the steel BB shot is going faster. One more chart for you. Check this one out. This is bismuth versus heavy 12, so density of 12. And you can see that the higher density will always be the lower density. No matter what speed they're going, it will always come out on top. That is just the nature of density. If you're paying more money, pay the money for density. Secret number two. Velocity is hype, mostly, not always. You have to have some velocity to do the job. But guys, velocity is a hype metric. It's a vanity metric. Before the 1991 steel conversion, almost no waterfowl ammo even had the velocity printed on the box. People didn't care. When it was lead, it just worked. That's all that mattered. And then people began to try to differentiate themselves by making their shot go faster and faster. And check this data out right here. I pulled together various different ammos. This steel is going four 400 feet per second faster than the bismuth when still going several hundred feet faster even still than the lead was going and no matter what you do the density will win by the end of the game that 400 feet per second just dissolves like nothing over the first few yards and by the time you reach 40 yards the bismuth is still going faster than the steel and the lead is basically at the same speed if not just a little bit faster even though it started drastically slower velocity is a vanity metric it matters about this much at 40 yards almost every load that I tested or was able to pull data for is within about plus or minus 50 feet per second. Even if it started 500 feet per second faster, it's plus or minus 50 feet per second at 40 yards. All right, guys, do not spend money for velocity. And the faster it goes, guys, the faster it loses velocity, but also usually the worse it patterns. Okay, don't spend extra for speed. All right, secret number three, more density is more pattern. All right, no matter what, density is gonna give you better patterns because you can use smaller shot. And the smaller the shot, the more pellets you fit in a shell. Look at this data right here, looking at several semi-equivalent shot sizes in order to get similar terminal performance. 
every time you increase density, you're able to use smaller shot to get the same. Actually, it's better than what the previous one was. So these are not just equivalent. Every time you step down this chart, you're getting better performance as well as more payload, as well as more pellets on the paper. Density gives you everything. And then here's another chart that just shows some more realistic payloads. And you can see what you're able to achieve because when you have more density, you can fit more pellets into the shell because that number of pellets takes up less volume due to the density. Number four secret, and that is that three and a half inch shells can actually cost you birds. Most of the time, three and a half inch shells are going to be a downer for the average hunter, not an advantage they are actually going to hurt performance. Primary reason is recoil. Look at this data right here, guys. As you step up in shell size and you have more payload and or more velocity, your recoil increases dramatically. All right, once you get to the chop of this chart, you're nearing 70 foot pounds of recoil. That is ridiculous. And then you compare that to some Magnum rifle calibers and you can see that some of these shot the people are shooting at ducks rival actually are double the recoil of a magnum rifle now it doesn't necessarily seem like that because what's happening is you have slower velocity than you do a magnum rifle the faster that's going the more it hits you like a sucker punch all right whereas a big heavy shotgun shell is more like a firm push all right it doesn't cause as much pain but it has much more impact on body position which means your second shot and your third shot are much worse worse. It is a lot harder to take birds with your follow-up shots and you end up pulling the trigger more and taking fewer birds home. You also don't necessarily have better patterns as you add more and more shots. Sometimes it blows out the patterns and you actually end up with more pellets in the air but fewer pellets in the 30 inch circle. Secret number five, more payload does equal more recoil and significantly more recoil guys it can make a huge difference. Take a look at this data right here. I added one eighth of an ounce of shot. All right, same brand, same velocity, same everything, same size shells, but just one eighth of an ounce more each time you step up. And every time you add an eighth of an ounce of shot, you are adding approximately 15% more recoil. Now at the lowest one of these, to me that was very comfortable to shoot, I could shoot those all day. Once I got up to one and a half ounces, that was a little bit heavier. I could feel it. It wasn't uncomfortable. It was maybe a little bit more recoil than was going to be good for me for second or third shots. But once I got to one and five eighths ounce, these straight hurt with every single trigger pull. So just adding that one eighth of an ounce can absolutely make a difference. I always recommend buy a box before you buy a case. See how it shoots, see how it patterns. Number six secret, hitting the like button will make you a better waterfowl hunter. Scientifically proven that when you like this video and help it reach more people, you will take more ducks in the field. Well, maybe not exactly, but I would super appreciate it. And if you like videos like this, tests, reviews, kicking the tires on assumptions, why don't you hit the subscribe button as well? All right, the real number six, more payload does not not, not being the key word, equal better patterns. All right, I tested several shells here again, same brand, same everything, but just added an eighth of an ounce of payload to each one. And as I added more payload, I actually got worse patterns. Okay, significantly worse percentage of pellets on paper, same choke, same everything, same everything. I'm sitting there, same paper. All right, well, different sheets of paper, but same targets. I'm sitting there at the range, same day, pulling the trigger, one after another after another, and we saw decreasing percentage of pellets. And even as you added, got to the one and five eighths ounce load level, you actually had fewer pellets on the paper in a 30 inch circle. Do not assume that a bigger payload will put more pellets on the circle or make you able to take more ducks. Always test guys, buy a box, test it, and then buy a case. Number seven, chokes do not help reduce recoil. I have done several test videos. Here is data from one of them. 
and you can see that as we used a ported choke versus a non-ported choke, we basically had no difference in recoil. Some showed a one degree one and a half degree change and then the other showed it one and a half degree less so you had a degree more you had a degree less no significant difference whatsoever using ported choke tubes to reduce recoil in fact guys i recommend unported choke tubes because ported choke tubes make it louder they do more damage to your ears and the ears of the people hunting around you number eight secret you want to choke to the limit all right big misconception here is that you need to use modified chokes in order to get the best performance here's some data with bismuth you can see that the more choke we used the better the pattern and the higher the percentage was you get to extra full you had better patterns than you did at every other level but that's not all here's some steel data on the same subject again once we got to extra full we actually had a better pattern than we did that modified now there was some diminishing returns in the middle I probably wouldn't use those two choke tubes they didn't like it for whatever reason but as you can see more choke did get us more pellets better patterns number nine secrets and yeah there may be a couple bonus secrets mixed in here at the end that I just couldn't fit in the top ten but number nine duck ammo will ruin your hearing it will absolutely obliterate your hearing over time. Nobody likes to talk about this, but you gotta think about it. You're using magnum loads, often with ported choke tubes. You might on a good day shoot 10 or 15 shots. Well, how many guys do you have in the blind with you? You got four guys, that's 60 shots in one day within a few feet of your ears. What does that do day after day, week after week, season after season? It absolutely decimates your hearing over time and I think it's about 86% of hunters do not wear hearing protection while hunting and it's even worse than it seems it's not just that your hearing goes down as you begin to lose hearing loss even just moderate hearing loss you increase your risk for Alzheimer's and dementia and other issues by over 300 percent all right guys this is bigger than just dulling your hearing some as you begin to change the input of the ear to the brain, it actually can cause severe mental illnesses. It can escalate those conditions. It can increase your risk factors by a dramatic percentage. You got to wear hearing protection. Now, 50 years ago, there were no good options. You've got earmuffs. I've tried them and they're terrible. You've got earplugs. I've used them and they're terrible. Today, you have some much better options in the area of digital hearing technology for for a hundred bucks or less, you can get some decent digital earmuffs that will block out the sound of gunshots while still letting you hear reasonably well. There's some entry level in ear protection that you can get. The walkers, the silencers, and some others are, are decent. I've tested them, done some reviews. They are not my favorite. I wouldn't recommend them for long term use, but they can get you doing something now for a reasonable price in order to protect your hearing. And then, top of the Line, my absolute favorite that I've been using for the last couple seasons are the Tetra Alpha Shields. Guys, these things are amazing. They don't just protect your hearing, but they make you a better hunter. When I put these things in, I can hear just as well with them as without them. It feels like after a couple minutes, I don't even remember I'm wearing them anymore. I can hear everything in the woods as if I just had open ears. But it does even more than that. They are calibrated to your specific hearing level. You take a hearing test before you order them. And if you've got a little hearing loss in this year, they can raise it up. If you've got a lot of hearing loss in this year, they can raise it back up. So they can restore your hearing back to normal levels. But what they do better than anyone else, I think they even have a patent on this, is they have isolated the sounds of the birds that you're hunting and created algorithms so that when they hear the sounds of ducks flapping their wings, quacks, whistles, dabbling in puddles, and all the other noises that ducks make and geese they amplify those sounds so you can hear the birds that you're hunting from further away so you can actually hear the waterfowl better from further with these on and then every time you pull the trigger on those magnets
magnum shotgun loads with your ported choke tubes, it turns it basically into the sound of a pellet gun, of a BB gun. It's like nothing. And then instantaneously, you have all you hearing back. You hear those birds hit the water. You hear splashes and things that you have never heard before because your hearing was always dulled from that muzzle blast. Unbelievable technology. Not super cheap to get started with, but guys, there's lots of cheap options out there that you can buy to get you in the game. What I recommend people, get whatever you can afford right now today to start protecting your hearing and then over time save up to get some things that are absolutely excellent like the Tetris. People like to upgrade guns all the time. They won't think about spending $2,000 on a new shotgun that does this much to help them all the while their hearing is suffering and year after year they're going downhill. Secret number 10, pellet oddities make little difference. Check out these examples. These are pellets that I pulled out of ballistics gel. They look ridiculous, deformed, mutated, hideous. They are absolutely terrible looking. However, they hit a duck sized target at 40 yards. Most of these loads patterned at 75, 80, 85 percent pattern density at 40 yards. They flew exceptionally well through the air. And despite how bad they look, they made almost no difference on performance. Some brands even tout pellet deformities as doing better and causing better wound channels or something. I don't know if there's anything to that. I have never seen that in the ballistics gel, but I can tell you the only negative you might have to some of these are like these giant ones here, those globules that are taking up the space that other pellets could have had. So you may have fewer pellets in a shell for the same amount of weight. Number 11, bonus fact, plated shot matters some. All right, I did an entire video on this, so I'm not gonna go deep into it here, but plated shot increases the lubricity of the pellets, essentially acting like a lubricant. It lubricates the pellets as they go through the barrel and specifically the choke tube so that they can slide and move against one another so they have less deformity, less friction, as well as less bouncing and spreading as they go through the choke tube. They fly through the air with less resistance, and then they fly through the target with less resistance. So you you can get slightly better patterning as well as slightly better terminal ballistics energy and penetration with plated shot. How much does it matter? I have seen anywhere between 5 and 15 percent increase in performance from plated shot. Now there's a lot of other variables. Nobody makes a shot with a shell. One's plated, one's not plated. All identical performance characteristics, right? So there's a lot of apples and oranges that goes into the testing but that is what I have seen. Bonus secret number 12. These tests cost a lot of money to do. Over the last couple years, I've spent hundreds, actually probably thousands of dollars doing all of these different tests and experiments between buying ammo, targets, ballistics gel, paper. I really appreciate every one of my Patreon supporters who as of late has helped take some of the burden off of my wallet. And guys, I'd ask if you like seeing videos like this, maybe consider supporting us on Patreon in order to help cover some of the costs that go into doing all this stuff. Now the real number 12 bonus secret, and that is pellets matter more than percentages. A lot of people fixate on the percentage of pellets that do this or that. The percentage of pellets in a circle. The percentage of pellets on paper. Guys, percentages don't kill anything. Only pellets kill ducks. Take a look at this data right here. You can see that the one that had the higher percentage had by far the lower number of pellets on the paper and in the kill zone. So the heavy 12s, even though they had a better percentage of the pellets in the shell hitting the circle, the boss had way more pellets on that bird. All right, so does the percentage matter? It matters this much from an academic standpoint to understand shot efficiency, but efficiency matters nothing compared to sheer number of pellets on the circle, at the range you're hunting, hitting the duck. Always put number of pellets above percentage of pellets. Bonus secret number 13, better ammo buys more range. That's essentially what you're getting when you spend more for better ammo. Look at this heavy 12 data for these number sixes. Fired at 40 yards and then fired at 60 yards. All right, these shells are not cheap. They're expensive. They are still nowhere near the cost of pure TSS shot, but they extend your range drastically. I would not hesitate for a second 
to fire these at 60 yards. 157 pellets in a 30 inch circle, even at 60 yards. At 70 yards, they're still going to be devastatingly effective against any duck in the sky. So when you spend more money, you should be getting denser shot, which then enables you to use smaller shot, which enables you to have better patterns, which enables you to both have the pattern density and the ballistics energy to punch out further for passing shots or for jump hunting shots. So what you guys need to do next is check out this video right here where I decode the marketing hype of waterfowl hunting ammunition, or check out this video here where I go in depth on plated shot. And of course, link to Patreon is down below in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Till next time, God bless you and go get them in the woods.